as they perform the same tasks all the times. It becomes possible for a worker to specialize in one aspect of the work and he concentrates on the performance of what or that particular task. And lastly, it encourages hard work as it reduces fatigue in the process of the work. Disadvantages now. Disadvantages of division of labor. One, it makes the work to be quite boring, repetitive, and uninteresting after some years. There is a risk of unemployment as a worker specializes in one aspect of the work, and there is a little or no knowledge of other aspect of the work as they only perform one task throughout the year. It leads to a loss of craftsmanship as workers entirely depend on uses of machines and not ants in the production in the process of production. Specialization. Specialization is an art of acquiring special skill to become an expert in one aspect of production or in a branch of profession and continuous performance of the task throughout one's life or for an indefinite period. Advantages of specialization. A person who spends his or her time performing one relatively simple task becomes very efficient at that particular task. Another advantage is no time wasted on in moving from one job to another. Also, the savings on equipment, if workers specialize, they will not need to have a full set of tools or other equipment. And also, an employee could be easily trained for a particular task he or she specializes in in a short period of time. Also, when a complex process is broken down into a series of separate simple processes, possible to devise machinery to carry out individual operations with advances in technology becoming possible to mechanize more areas of production. Disadvantages of specialization. One, if workers specialize too much, it may be difficult for them to perform in other tasks when there is a need to cover for workers who are not present. Workers can get bored performing the same tasks every day. This may result in them making mistakes and may result in absenteeism or even labor turnover. Specialization means that workers may have a wide range of skills. When demand or supply conditions change, their particular skills may no longer be needed. Exchange Exchange implies more or less trade by butter. It is the process of giving out one commodity, e.g. pepper, and getting in return another commodity, like rice. Let's look at advantages of exchange. 1. It enables a person or country to gain possession of what she cannot produce. It enables people to concentrate on the production of only one commodity and they gain much skill and experience in that activity. Also, it raises people's standard of living as they have access to various items of comfort which they cannot produce by themselves. Disadvantages of exchange It makes people and countries to be interdependent. This is quite risky in the event of war. It encourages laziness as people depend on the easiest means of livelihood like courtesy, theft, and other forms of dubious activities as they can easily exchange without the without they receiving income for any of their need. These people's standard of living, as they have access to various items of comfort, which they cannot produce by themselves. It encourages laziness, as people depend on the easiest means of livelihood, like courtesy, theft, and other forms of dubious activities like as they can easily exchange without 
receiving income for any of their need. The interrelationship between production, division of labor, specialization, and exchange. Production involves making and distribution of goods, arranging of services to satisfy human wants. In productive activity, each part is performed by a person or a group of persons who are experts in that aspect of the work. Division of labor brings about specialization as the work in the factory is split into several parts. Specialization are giving back to exchange. That's trade. As people specialize, they can only produce one commodity or a part of it. It is therefore not opportune to produce other, commodi or other commodities. As they cannot survive with only one commodity, they are compelled to exchange their products with those of others. And said that specialization necessitates trade, exchange. An exchange gave birth to trade. Exchange is a good method of getting whatever you need after you might have given out whatever you possess. While trade is a modern method of getting whatever you need by giving out money, that is, money acts as a medium of exchange. So you exchange money for goods. Trade. Trade is a basis of commerce. It is the buying, distribution, and selling of goods. This is a chart showing the two major components of trade. We have home trade and foreign trade. Under home trade, we have wholesale and retail. Under foreign trade, we have import, intraport, and export. The home trade, we talk about the home trade and the foreign trade and intraport trade. Home trade. Home trade is the buying and selling of goods within a country. It mainly involves people living in the country, locally made goods, and uses of local currency notes. We have two divisions of home trade. We have wholesale trade and retail trade, as earlier shown. Wholesale trade. It is a trade in which very large quantities of goods are bought by wholesalers, that's big traders, from manufacturers, later sold in small quantities to retailers. And we have retail trade. It is a trade in which retailers buy a fairly large quantities from wholesalers. Later, they display them in shops and sell in small quantities directly to the final, cons uh, final consumer. They are divided into small-scale retail and large-scale retail. So this is a chart showing various types of retailers. We have small-scale and large-scale. On that small scale, we have parking, we have peddling, we have mobile shops, we have automatic vending machine, we have store holding, tight shop, and single shops. Why on that large scale? We have multiple shops, that's chain stores. We have supermarkets, departmental stores, cooperative stores, and mail other firms that are also referred to as big stores. They are big traders. Characteristics of retail trader. There are no trade restrictions like embargo, tariffs, etc. It normally involves local languages. Also, the articles of trade are mostly local items like foodstuffs, vegetable, books, clothes, etc. Nowadays, However, foreign goods are also part of the articles. Functions of retail trade. 1. It keeps assorted goods and at times affixes price tags on them. 2. It provides pre and after sales services to customers. 3. It passes useful information to both wholesalers.